In the past, many visual effects and game development studios were wary of adopting Blender due to its GNU General Public License, or GPL. And in 2018, one of Blender developers noted that the fact that Blender is GPL has definitely hurt Blender's rate of adoption in large studios, a sentiment echoed by industry professionals on forums for many years. So why did Blender have this negative aura from the game development and VFX industry perspective, and how did Blender actually convince them to get over it? You see, studios routinely write custom plugins for 3D software. With Blender, there was ambiguity whether these plugins or add-ons could be considered derived works under GPL, meaning they should be shared with the public. Large VFX houses often develop extensive in-house plugins or add-ons and pipeline code for tools like Maya or Houdini. With Blender's GPL, management worried that using or modifying Blender could force them to open source their competitive secrets. This led to a stance where very few people wanted to deal with GPL, especially in big studios. If so, any add-on shared outside of the studio, for example with freelancers or co vendors would need to be GPL compliant. For context, a Reddit user described GPL as a creepy license, meaning anything that touches Blender and is developed for Blender needs also to be GPL, causing legal headaches for studios. While this isn't entirely accurate, GPL applies to code linked to Blender's code, not the 3D assets or separate programs, but the new ones often require legal vetting. As you can see, for many studios, this wasn't worth the headache, especially at first. But this wasn't the only problem. Many standard VFX pipeline components, like asset datasets, asset encryptions, or third-party SDKs, like Autodesk FBX Library, are proprietary and GPL incompatible. In other words, if a studio tried to embed such libraries in a Blender-based tool, or if Blender's code couldn't include these SDKs or software development kits, it created integration roadblocks. What made this more troubling is the fact that Blender lacked a native FBX support for years, and the GPL prevented using Autodesk's official FBX SDK, so Blender relied on the community to reverse engineer when it comes to importing and exporting. This made moving data between Blender and other software such as Max and Maya's pipeline really hard, to say the least. And although these issues are tangential to using Blender for content creation, the perception of risk was enough to discourage the adoption, especially in the early days. One VFX developer on Hacker News argued that studios simply did not want to open source the tools and programs they develop as part of their pipelines. One screw up or chain of viral connections is seen as insane risk, reflecting a conservative approach to GPL software, and Blender in particular. But here is the thing, these concerns were often based on misunderstanding. In reality, using Blender for content creation doesn't infect the produced art or the assets, because those are explicitly outside of the GPL scope. It wasn't very clear at first, but only if a studio distributed a modified version of Blender or an add-on linked to Blender would they need to share the source code with the recipients. Furthermore, GPL doesn't mandate public release of an in-house code if it is not distributed externally, and studios could legally keep custom Blender builds or add-ons private as long as they don't release them outside of the organization. As Blender developer Lucas Stockner clarified, the GPL does not actually allow secret in-house plugins. If you've never published the plugin, nobody can force you to release it. Nonetheless, until recently many studios were unwilling to even approach these gray areas, especially when robust proprietary alternatives like Maya, Max, Houdini, etc. were entrenched in the industry pipelines. So you see the problem here. First of all, the Blender Foundation has been pragmatic in making parts of Blender more integration friendly. A milestone was the decision to re release the Cycles rendering engine from GPL to Apache 2.0 in 2013. This permissive license change was agreed upon by all contributors, explicitly allowed Cycles to be linked to proprietary software without legal issues. As the announcement stated, Cycles source code license has been changed from GNU GPL to the Apache License 
a permissive license that allows cycles to be linked and used with any program, including commercial software and in-house software at studios. So if you own a studio, you would feel some relief, because this move acknowledges that studios might want to integrate Blender's production-proven render engines into their own tools or pipelines, and it removed a major licensing barrier for doing so, and gave them more flexibility. Also, over the last decade, the VFX industry has increasingly gravitated toward open formats, often open source, for data interchange, which the Blender Foundation has nothing to do with. It was a trend that played to Blender's strengths, so rather than relying on proprietary formats like FBX, many studios now use Alembic, which is open source, for baked geometry, cache data, and USD for scene exchange. Blender added robust Alembic support in version 2.7 and introduced USD import and export in Blender 2.83. So by supporting these standards, Blender can slot into pipelines without forcing a direct code integration. For example, a studio can model or animate in Blender, then export to USD for lighting in Houdini or rendering in a proprietary pipeline. So no custom Blender plugin or add-on is required, and thus no GPL conflict. As a Blender's USD developer puts it, with USD, Blender users could collaborate on assets and shots in really fast and efficient ways building really complex scenes with all the burden of incompatible formats. Another turnaround is that studios found they could integrate Blender as an external process rather than deeply embedding it. Blender's flexible Python API and support for command line scripting allow studios to drive Blender through scripts or external pipeline tools, treating it as a black box content creation engine. This means that a studio's proprietary pipeline code can call Blender to do a task like rendering a scene or running a simulation via command line or sockets. And the best part, they retrieve the output, all without linking directly to Blender's code. You see, this isolation avoids triggering GPL concerns while still leveraging Blender's capabilities. Also, over the years, it became better understood that Blender add-ons can be distributed under permissive licenses, like MIT, BSD, etc as long as they don't directly include Blender C code. The Blender Foundation guidance and the Blender Markets policy, now called Superhive, confirm that Python plugins don't have to be strictly GPL. They must simply not contradict GPL when run inside Blender, and that's it. Another important thing, aside from licensing, Blender addressed other pipeline adoption factors. Let me explain. For example, it began following the VFX reference platform, which is a standardized set of library versions, Python, OpenXR, etc., that major VFX software adhere to each year. And sticking to this spec makes it easier to deploy Blender in studios without library conflicts. In 2022, when the Blender Foundation briefly considered deriving from the VFX reference platform to move faster, feedback from industry users prompted a quick reversal. And this, reassured technical directors that Blender would play nice in mixed software pipelines, and I would say this is really important. In a similar fashion, long-requested features like UDIM texture support, which was added in 2020, and OpenVDB volume import, which was added in version 2.82, were implemented as well, often with studios contributing code. For example, Tangent Animation helped develop Blender's USD, and OpenVDB integration as part of their pipeline efforts, which is a really interesting move. You see, each of these additions removed a practical barrier that had kept Blender out of high-end pipelines. Another interesting thing I would like to add, which helped comfort studios in adopting Blender, the late 2010s saw a surge of industry investments in Blender and other open source tools. For example, Epic Games awarded Blender a 1.2 million mega grant in 2019, and companies like Ubisoft, Microsoft, Unity, and Adobe joined the Blender Development Fund as a corporate member. You see, this influx of support not only accelerated Blender's development, but also lent it a stamp of legitimacy, and studios began seeing Blender not as a hobbyist toy, but as a serious and evolving 3D software that even competitors were funding. And according to Blender CEO Tom Rosenthal, 
having Epic on board was a major milestone to improve Blender's code quality and attract more industry contributors. And there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Also, if you want more like this, you can subscribe to this channel. Thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.